Hello, this is Aaron with Anet Computers from AnetComputers.com once again with another possible potential fix for an issue you're having. Today, this deals with iPod syncing your iPod. I filed it under software problems. Sync iPod. Solve an iPod sync issue may cause iTunes to freeze. For SEO purposes, that sentence may not have been perfectly grammatically correct, but basically solve iPod sync issue which may cause iTunes to freeze. Syncing an iPod may cause iTunes to freeze. That iPod is recognized and you get a setup iPod screen. When you select done, that iTunes program freezes. So you're trying to sync your iPod and then your iPod gets recognized but then when you select done, iTunes completely freezes. You can download and install a most recent version of iTunes from Apple. So what, what can happen is it can turn into an infinite loop where it doesn't matter what you try, iTunes keeps freezing. So this is a possible fix for that issue. I'm already at the Apple website. As you can see here, you can uncheck these first two boxes where it stipulates send me iTunes updates. So I'm going to just uncheck it. Then you can uncheck keep me up to date with Apple news, blah, blah, blah. You do not have to enter an email address and then click download now. And as you can see, it works. So, and then blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to show you that. So you don't necessarily have to enter your email address and you don't have to sign up for iTunes updates or anything else news, software updates, etc. So continuing on, click on an appropriate software version radio button. You can also uncheck those boxes next to and email me and keep me up to date with options if you don't want email from Apple. Okay, so once you download that installation file, obviously you're going to run the installation program. Now try to sync your iPod and hopefully that will solve your problem. Hopefully, iTunes will no longer freeze. If it still freezes, I have another possible potential tip. If that does not work, then you can try another option, which is to reformat your iPod. In order to do this, make sure all your files and songs on your iPod are already backed up. If your iPod is empty, then please reformat your iPod. So yes, if you have files, songs, mp3s, etc. on your iPod that you want to keep, you have to make sure to back that they are backed up first. And then reformat your iPod because it will wipe out all those files. So that's a caveat. Connect your iPod to your PC, personal computer or Mac and iTunes will run and try to sync your iPod. This is after you reformat your iPod. So you've backed up your important MP3 files and then you reformatted your iPod. Now you hook up your iPod to your computer that has the latest version of iTunes. iTunes is going to try to sync with your iPod. Connect your iPod to your blah, 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 blah. It will run and try to sync your iPod. It will freeze again. It might freeze again. This time, kill that iTunes software process either by continually hitting an X to close that program or pressing your Control alt and delete keys at the same time. Control alt delete on a Windows computer is a quick way to get to your task manager. Once in task manager, you look for the iTunes process and then you end it or kill it. A Processes menu will open after pressing Control alt delete Highlight iTunes and select End Process. Once iTunes is closed, then go to My Computer. In My Computer, you will see a separate drive and letter for your iPod. Right-click that drive and select Format. So here's another tip. If downloading a most recent version of iTunes does not fix your software issue from where iTunes freezes when you sync your iPod, well then format your iPod. If formatting your iPod does not work, well then try this.
you can format your iPod on the actual device on your by going to your iPod. This is a way to format it through my computer on a Windows computer. In my computer, you will see a separate drive and letter for your iPod. Right click that drive and select format. This will erase everything on your iPod, so please make sure you have all your files off your iPod backed up first if you have any. Yes, if you have any important MP3 files, any any files on your iPod that are important that you want to save, you obviously you want to make sure you back them up, copy them to another part of your hard drive or a USB memory stick or whatever, external hard drive, whatever. Then you can format it through Windows. Once your iPod is reformatted, please try to sync it again with iTunes. These preceding instructions were for a Windows-based computer. Substitute these appropriate commands and actions for your Mac. This might be useful for you as a kind of a broad guideline on how to perform these sets of instructions on a Mac, but obviously they are not verbatim. So, And then some other caveats. Let's say you went through these processes, no bueno, no good, muy mal, didn't fix your issue. Well, what you could do is you could start from scratch, back up your data on your iPod, format it, either on, either format it by going into your, onto your iPod device and formatting it that way, or format it through your Mac computer or your Windows computer, hook up your iPod, then go to my computer on a Windows based operating system and then right click and then format it or say whatever procedures are on a Mac. Then I would say that what I would do is I would uninstall iTunes completely. But that but you want to do it properly. There are certain sub software there are certain other software programs that iTunes needs to run like QuickTime Apple Updater, etc. You would want that's another that's a different video, but you would want to look into that. Google or I actually have a video. I have another video on my Anet Computers YouTube channel where I go specifically into detail about which programs you want to remove in order cuz there's a specific order that Apple suggests you remove. So I suggest uninstalling iTunes completely after you formatted your iPod hard drive. Okay, then once you have uninstalled Apple iTunes on your computer in order, I would run a file cleaner utility. My preference is CCleaner, but you don't have to use CCleaner. If there's another program out there that works the way you want it to work, basically you just want to clean up files on your hard drive temp files, cache files, program files. Sometimes these softwares that get installed on Windows computers, they don't, when you go and remove them, either via control panel or its own uninstall process, they don't always remove their remnants. Same thing with the registry. You would want to run a registry scan, clean scan, with either CCleaner or whatever file cleanup utility you prefer to use. And then, as always, with CCleaner, I run them multiple times until they no longer find any files. When I run a file scan, I keep running it until it no longer finds any files to delete. Same thing with the registry scan. I keep running CCleaner's registry scan until it no longer finds any items in the registry to remove. Once I've completed that, then I would go out to the Apple iTunes download and then in this description of this YouTube video, I will leave a web link to my blog so that you can quickly get to Apple's download link as you can see right here. Download iTunes program. That way if it, it might be convenient, you just click on this link and it takes you to Apple's download web page. Or it's really apple.com slash iTunes slash download. But they might change that URL. So you just never know. But as long as it keeps working, I will embed that link in the description of this YouTube video. So you can quickly get to Apple's download website. So then I would download the most current version, which according to today 
It's iTunes 11.3 for Windows 64-bit. But if you're on a Mac or it might be different, or if you're on XP, obviously you're not going to download Windows 60, unless you're using a w version of Windows XP that's 64-bit, but it's specific to your computer, but neither here nor there. So download a most recent version of iTunes after you formatted your iPod and after you completely removed iTunes. Then go ahead and reinstall it. It might take a while. It, it's going to install Apple QuickTime all over again and the, the Bonjour and the Apple Updater, but that's okay. Then try to sync your iPod. And then hopefully, hopefully it will work. So hopefully these tips will help you get your iPod syncing with your iTunes software again. So you can always browse to anetcomputers.com for other potential fixes for your most common computer problems. Thank you for listening.